Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So I am on my way to Chengzhou right now. Chengzhou is an island located about a mile away from Hong Kong. So I'm just going out there to kind of escape the crowds because Hong Kong is usually very crowded as you can see from this video right here already. So while I'm out there, I'm going to do my review of the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. I've been using this phone as my daily driver for over two weeks now, like close to three weeks. So I have a very good impressions of this device. It's very similar to the standard Huawei P40 Pro. And I've already made several videos on that phone and written several thousand words on it. By now, you should already know that this is the best camera system around, bar none. And also, this is, in my opinion, the best smartphone hardware around, at least my favorite hardware. Anyway, let me get on the boat and I'll continue there. Okay, so turns out I missed the last boat and the next boat, it's like half an hour away. So now I'm just sitting here by the pier, kind of deciding if I still want to go because half an hour, it's kind of a long way. And once I get on, it's another like 30 minute ride. But I figure I might as well do part of the review here while I'm still technically in Hong Kong Island. So the difference between the P40 Pro Plus here and the standard P40 Pro comes in two areas. The first is the body is now made of ceramic. So it feels a little bit more full and it's slightly heavier in the hand than the glass bodied P40 Pro. The second improvement comes in the camera. So there's an additional 3X telephoto zoom lens here now that's perfect for portrait photography. It's about 80 millimeters focal length. And the periscope zoom lens, it's a souped up version of what we've seen in the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra or the standard P40 Pro or the Oppo Find X2 Pro. This one has an additional curve inside the lens to allow light to travel a little bit longer and hit more mirrors and lenses on the way before it reaches the image signal processor. That allows whatever image to be taken in by a lens to be magnified organically before it even reaches the brain of the phone, which is the Kirin 990. So just an extra turn and an extra couple of lenses inside allows the periscope zoom lens here to achieve 10x lossless optical zoom. No other phones can do this for now. On the periscope zoom lens found in the S20 Ultra and the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the P40 Pro, those phones max out at 5x lossless zoom. So if you go 10x, it actually becomes becomes hybrid zoom, which is not lossless. So I'll do a quick sample right here just to show you the zoom powers of the P40 Pro Plus. It is definitely the best zoom system I've tested yet. So let's go up to 10x. So now this is just about the sharpest 10x image I've seen from a smartphone. Of course, you can zoom in more. So you can go up to, all the way up to 100x really, but at 100x, then it becomes you know, the, the image quality suffers from loss of details and just generally slightly blurry and blotchy. It still looks better than the 100X zoom on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, but definitely this is not a lossless image. Instead, I would max out at like 30. I think at 30, you're still getting something really sharp and very usable. So let's try to shoot across the Hong Kong Harbors. So I don't know if you can see right now, but that building right there, that's the one I always take a picture of because that's right across from my apartment. So now I'm all the way on the other side of the building. So let's try to zoom in to there with the 100X. Okay, it's 100X now. So you can still see some details of the mural and the textures of that building because this building has a very unique texture. Let's do 50X. So at 50X, a lot of the image integrity comes back. You can now identify this building by looking at the textures of the material that's being used. But again, ultimately, if you keep it at 10X, you're gonna get really, really nice images. Okay, I got on the boat. I am now on a boat moving to Chengzhou. So I'm gonna take this time to show you guys the video stabilization of the Huawei P40 Pro Plus because it's really good. You may have seen my video testing the Vivo X50 Pro a couple of days ago, which has a built-in gimbal. So that phone has really good stabilization and it completely beat the iPhone and Google Pixel 4 really badly. But the Huawei P40 Pro's stabilization actually held its own against the Vivo X50 Pro, despite the Vivo device having a gimbal. That's because this phone defaults to shooting video with a wide angle camera and it also has OIS technology. So right now I'm on a moving boat and I'll just shoot a sample video just to show you how good stabilization is. 
I'm just walking right now on a moving boat. I hope I don't fall down the stairs. So I'm watching the footage now. And yeah, stabilization is really good. Keep in mind, I'm, I shot this video using one hand holding the phone. My other hand was holding this camera and I was walking on a moving boat. So the wide angle camera on the P44 Plus is also a pretty good vlog camera because the field of vision is wider than shooting with the main lens of other phones and stabilization is pretty good as I mentioned. How's the mic quality? How do I sound right now? I mean, this is a pretty loud environment I'm in right now. Okay, we are in Changzhou. So earlier at the beginning of the video, I said Changzhou is about one mile away from Hong Kong. I was wrong, it's actually six miles away. So this is one of the oldest fishing villages in Hong Kong. Um, one of the first parts of Hong Kong to be inhabited by, by people coming from China and other regions. So I usually come out here to avoid the crowds, but today's a weekend, so it's still super, super packed. But there are areas of this island that's a little bit more quiet, so I'll be going there to test the camera a bit more. So, so far I've covered the periscope zoom lens and the wide-angle camera of the P40 Pro Plus. Let's next talk about the depth sensor. So the depth sensor, you know, I'm not the hugest fan of needing a dedicated depth sensor in smartphones because I think software bokeh is really good. But I gotta say, the P40 Pro Plus' depth sensor gets the job done. Bokeh images are really nice and you can adjust the aperture, at least the digital version of the f-stop anyway. So you can manually dial up and down to simulate the effects of shooting with a wide open aperture or something a little bit smaller so you get a shallower depth of field or something not as shallow if you want more areas of the background to be in focus. Okay, so now let's talk about the main camera system with the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. I'll try not to dwell too much on numbers and specs because this is the same camera as seen in the Huawei P40 Pro. Simply put, this is the best main camera around. It's a 50 megapixel RYYB sensor. Now RYYB stands for red, yellow, yellow, blue. And it's something that Huawei created itself to differentiate from other digital image sensors out there which are RGB sensors, red, green, and blue. So Huawei basically took out the green and put in two yellow pixels because yellow, it's more sensitive to light. This allows the main camera to be more sensitive to light information than RGB sensors. This was already evident since last year's P30 Pro when Huawei first introduced the RYYB sensor, that phone can basically see in the dark in pitch black conditions when other phones like the Samsung Galaxy S10 and iPhone XS were just taking pictures of like pitch black scenes, this phone can pull light out of nowhere. Now Huawei has improved on that with this year's generation because it increased the image sensor size to to 1 over 1.28 inches. If you're familiar with digital photography, you know that image sensor size, it's the most important hardware factor because the larger the image sensor, the more light you can take in and light ultimately is the most important factor of digital imaging. So the main camera here has the largest image sensor around, larger than what's seen in the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, in the iPhone, in the Google Pixel, everything. So if you're talking about low light performance, this phone just cannot be beat, it can see in the dark. And in any situation where it's kind of dim, but not pitch black, like in, in a city at night, you're gonna get images that almost look like it's daytime. Now, not everybody likes this. Some people have complained that this is actually not a, an accurate represent, representation of how a night image look and I can see the point. You can manually dial down the lighting a little bit though if you think that's overkill. Otherwise, if you're shooting during the day, the P40 Pro Plus's camera is mostly flawless. No matter what condition you're shooting in, such as against harsh backlight, you know, under the sun, whatever, Huawei's image algorithm will be smart enough to compensate and pump out an image that's very well balanced and very sharp and well detailed all around. The only complaint I might have is that a lot of times the image processing kicks in after the photo has been taken. So if I'm shooting something that's kind of a challenging condition, like maybe with 
an area that's completely drenched in shadows and an area where there's a harsh backlight coming in. A lot of times on the viewfinder, I'll see the image one way. After I snap the photo, then Huawei's image software algorithm will kick in and fine tune the picture. And even though it will be a better picture, it will technically look different from what I snapped. This is something that the Google Pixel 4 has Huawei beat. Google Pixel 4 has this software algorithm called what you see is what you get. So that means whatever like changes Google is gonna make to the image, it's already doing it in real time in the viewfinder. So the exact same lighting condition you see in the viewfinder, it's the exact same picture you're gonna get. That's not the case with the Huawei P40 Pro Plus or any other phone really. Now the selfie camera of the P40 Pro Plus, it's a 32 megapixel sensor. And I, you guys know I don't like taking selfies at all, but for people who love taking selfies, they have nothing but good things to say about the Huawei P40 Pro camera. So overall, when you factor in everything, the fact that this has the best zoom system around, a main camera that can produce light in almost pitch black conditions, a main camera that does not overexpose lights even when you're shooting in backlit conditions, a depth sensor that actually produce pretty natural looking depth of field effect, a dedicated 3x zoom lens that covers the focal length in between 1x and 10x, and now on top of all that, you have some of the best in-class image stabilization for video. So the end result is the most capable camera system around, the best camera hardware around. I forgot to mention this part, Huawei P40 Pro Plus's camera can also shoot ultra, ultra slow motion videos. That slows it down to 256X, which is much slower than what any other phone can do right now. In fact, Huawei's ultra slow motion video is so slow, it slows down motion by so much, that it almost looks like you're looking at a still photo. That sometimes it looks a little bit boring because nothing is moving. Now this is not a new or exclusive feature to the P40 Pro Plus. This has been around since the Mate 30 Pro, but I thought it's worth mentioning because this is another area that Huawei phone can do something that no other phone can do right now. So I already mentioned this in my P40 Pro review and the same applies to the P40 Pro Plus. I think this phone has the best in-hand feel of any phone I've handled. The reason for that's because other phones with curved screens, the, curve, the curvature actually uh, ends in a slightly pointy edge. That's not the case here. Huawei has figured out a way to flatten the sides even with a curved screen. So there's no sharp edges on this phone. It fits into my hand pretty nicely. And as most of you guys probably already know, the display here, 90 hertz panel, curves at the top and bottom too. Now, this makes for a minor visual, aesthetically pleasing visual effect of the screen curving. But really the major benefits when you're swiping up and down on the bottom of the screen, which is something we do a lot now on smartphones. When I'm swiping up and down on the P40 Pro Plus, I'm swiping on a curved rounded edge. Whereas if I swipe on a Xiaomi phone or a Samsung S20 Ultra, I'm swiping on a you know, slightly hard, harsher corner. Now battery life is epic as usual on Huawei phones. Uh, right now it's 5.38 p.m. I've been out since 11 a.m. today and it's been a really heavy day of walking around, you know, taking a lot of videos and using Google Maps and navigation. And right now I still have 60% battery life. I don't know if you can see, 60% battery life. I think with many other phones, right now my, my battery would already be down to the 30, 40%. In general, no matter how heavy I push this phone, this is a phone that can last me an entire day out and about. Like I leave the house at 10 a.m. I can come back at midnight, which is a 14 hour day, and I'm pretty sure I'll still have like 20, 25% battery life left. Now, obviously we can't review a Huawei phone without talking about the software issue. Due to the ongoing beef with the US government, the P40 Pro Plus cannot run Google mobile services. Now, how badly this will affect you depends on who you are. I'm not gonna lie, for some people, a chunk of people in the US, not having access to GMS will be a complete deal breaker. It will just completely ruin your day-to-day -day experience. There's no way around it. But for me, I found that the experience to be not ideal. Like I'm never gonna love that the phone can't have access to GMS, but it has not been a deal breaker. A major reason for that is because Huawei is building its own mobile services, HMS, and it's meant to compete with GMS eventually. It's not there yet, but Huawei is pouring in like billions of dollars to build it up, so maybe it will get there. I actually made a video, a deep dive looking at HMS recently. So if you're interested, I would suggest please click on that video just to learn more about what Huawei is doing to try to overcome this major obstacle. 
But even before HMS gets there, there's a chance that you may be able to use a Huawei phone right now as is and not find the lack of GMS crippling. That's because some Google apps and services still work on this phone. Google Maps actually can still run on Huawei devices even right now. I used Google Maps earlier today to find my way to the ferry to take the boat over here. Gmail still works, but not the Gmail app. You have to run Gmail through a third party uh, app client such as Microsoft Outlook or Huawei's own email app will support Gmail too. So I've been able to get all my emails here perfectly fine even though I am using Gmail. Google Chrome still runs here without any issues and also Google Keyboard which I use quite a lot because Google Keyboard has a really good Cantonese typing keyboard. So, so for me a lot of the Google stuff I use actually is not completely lost. I can still use it on this phone. So overall I would say that the degree to which the software here, it's broken, has been overstated by a lot of American medias because they really didn't give this phone a chance. As soon as they heard that GMS was banned, they already decided, oh, you can't use the phone. But that's simply not true. You might still be able to make this phone if you make a couple of compromises. Now, of course, it sucks that you have to make these compromises in the first place. But I would say, don't blame Huawei for that. Blame Donald Trump for that, as usual. Ultimately, we have to talk about the price when we talk about Huawei P40 Pro Plus because this is a really, really expensive phone. In Europe, it starts at, I believe, 1399 euro. That's like 1,600 American dollars. Now, fortunately for us in Hong Kong, the phone's a little bit cheaper. Its official retail price is 9999 HKD. That comes out to about 1,000. 300 US dollars. So it's like almost 300 bucks cheaper than in Europe. No matter what though, these prices are very, very high and there's gonna be people who scoff at Huawei's pricing. But um, how can I put this? It doesn't matter because the P40 Pro Plus is a luxury item. You have to remember, in, in China, Huawei is looked at as a brand that's like on Apple level. Like they used to sell the Porsche edition of phones at similar price and people in China will pick them up. So there are definitely people in China like businessmen, people with money to spend who will gladly pay 1,600 US dollars to get the phone. But in Europe, 1,400 euro for a P40 Pro Plus is gonna be a hard sell. But there's the standard P40 Pro that's like almost 400 euros cheaper. And that phone is still very, very capable. You have the exact same main camera, the exact same wide angle camera. So the only thing you're losing out on is the periscope zoom lens. It's not as powerful and you don't get that 3X telephoto zoom lens. But for the most part, you're getting like 90 to 95% of the performance and you're saving 400 euros. The P40 Pro Plus is ultimately a luxury item for people with a lot of money to spend or someone who just wants the absolute best camera hardware around. It's very unfortunate that the Google situation has kind of thrown a monkey wrench into Huawei's plans because if the Google situation did not exist, if this phone can run like every app on Android like any other phone, this would be a no-brainer recommendation for a lot of people, not just the P40 Pro Plus, but the standard P40 Pro. As it is now, those of you who are interested in the Huawei P40 Pro or the Plus, you have to consider your usage and just examine the degree to which your life is tied to Google. I always think competition is a good thing, so I hope Huawei succeeds in building that third alternative. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna admire what Huawei has done with the camera hardware here. This is just a full generation ahead of what everybody else is doing. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Right now, Huawei is the only uh, phone that can do 10x optical zoom. Maybe by next year, like the Samsung Galaxy S, S30 or maybe the Note 30, they'll finally get 10x optical zoom. And then maybe Apple will do that in two years. Either way, the tech in Huawei cameras right now are a full generation ahead. So anyway, I'm gonna go get some dinner now in Chengzhou. Thanks for watching this half review, half vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. Thank you for watching. Take care, stay healthy, stay safe.